Hey guys, it's Sarah here. In this video, I'm going to be going over all about strep throat. So let's get started. Here's just a little introduction to strep. So strep stands for streptococcus. Specifically, what we're talking about when we talk about strep throat, we're talking about group A streptococcus, G-A-S. And what that is, is it's a bacteria that's a gram-positive bacteria. And the reason why that's important is because if you know if it's a gram-positive, you know which antibiotics you need to effectively treat gram-positive bacteria. And we'll discuss that in the treatment section. In terms of symptoms, typically someone will have a sore throat, they'll have pain or difficulty swallowing due to the pain, they'll have cervical lymphadenopathy, which is basically enlarged lymph nodes, as you see in the picture over there. But not necessarily will everyone have a sore throat. With kids especially, usually they'll come in with joint pain, they'll come in with headache, vomiting, nausea, fever, or they'll have a rash. Just because they're not complaining about sore throat, it doesn't mean they don't have strep. And just because someone is complaining about sore throat doesn't mean they have strep. These are the typical symptoms you'll see. So in terms of the transmission, so number one, through respiratory droplets. So think of like sneezing and all those little particles are being dispersed. And direct contact. So, so I touch a cup or drink from a cup, you drink from the same cup, stuff like that. Um, in terms of incubation period, what incubation period is, it's a time when you're contagious, but you're not showing symptoms. So that's so that makes it really easy for it to spread because your kid feels fine, you send them to daycare, really they have strep, but they're not showing symptoms. So then they spread it around and then by the time they show symptoms, you take them out of daycare, but everyone else already got it. So in that way, in general, we tell people to wash their hands, um, you know, just the regular stuff to help prevent spread germs because you don't even know when people are in the incubation period. So in terms of strep, the incubation period is two to five days. So, so generally when someone gets it for two to five days, they won't be showing symptoms and then they'll start to show symptoms. In terms of diagnosis, so number one, we say, who do we decide to test? Like if someone comes in with a sore throat, are we just testing everyone with a sore throat? Are we just testing everyone um, for strep? So generally we use a center criteria and the criteria is right on, on the slide. You'll see the present of fever gives you one point. Everything gives you one point, except for if you're over 45, so it gives you negative a point. And so you add up the points. If it's over three, generally they'll be swabbed and they'll be treated with antibiotics if they're positive. If it's four or five, they could be treated empirically with antibiotics. But this is not um, a rule to exactly stand by. You know, you have to use your clinical judgment and everything else. And even if someone doesn't check up any of these boxes, they still could have strep and vice versa. Even if someone checks up all these boxes, they still could not have strep. So you also have to use your clinical judgment and listen to, you know, the patient, et cetera. In terms of actually swabbing people, what we swab is we swab with a rapid antigen test. A quick swab the back of the throat. Sometimes they, they feel like and they gag when you do it, so it's not so pleasant. If it's positive, it'll, it'll look like a pregnancy test in terms of two lines. And if it's negative, it'll just be one line. If it's negative, sometimes people do cultures and a culture will be an overnight and then we'll see if the bacteria grows on it. We also some, sometimes do culture for people who had high risk for complications, like people who had rheumatic fever before and other people who are immunocompromised, et cetera. So um, sometimes it's beneficial to culture them, but, but it's a case by case. In terms of the differential diagnosis, so other stuff that could mimic in terms of the symptoms, they could also think viruses are quite common. COVID, for instance, causes a very sore throat that people come in with. Mono, if you look in their throat, it looks pretty much the same. Influenza, which is flu, they could also have a sore throat. And there's also other stuff besides for viruses like gonorrhea. Also, they could be complaining with a sore throat. Um, and just other referred pain, like someone could have an ear infection and then their throat could be hurting. So this is just good differentials to keep. It's not um, all inclusive, but they are just some differentials. In terms of the treatment for strep, so for adults, we give penicillin V, 500 milligrams by mouth, two times a day for 10 days. For kids, I generally like to do amoxicillin because it tastes good. And number one thing is compliance. So if you want a kid to be compliant and actually take the whole medicine and not spit it up, I would primarily go with amoxicillin. The dose would be 50 milligrams per kilograms per day, once a day, or if you're going to divide the dose um, by every 12 hours, then you're 25 milligrams per kilograms per dose. And this is done for 10 days. Obviously, you always want to keep in, in the back of your mind the max daily dose allowed. If they're, if they're allergic to to penicillin. So if it's like a mild reaction, you know, we're not talking about anaphylactic, we're talking about a mild rash or something like that, then you could give them a cephalosporin like um, cephalexin, which is Keflex. 
or you give them a macrolide, which is azithromycin. If you're concerned for macrolide resistance, or you can't use penicillin or cephalosporin for any reason, then you could use a third line, which is clindamycin. So usually we go for penicillin, moxicillin first. If there's any reason why we can't do that, we go to our cephalosporins like Keflex or cephalexin, same thing, or macrolides like azithromycin. If we can't use any of those, then we'll go for clindamycin. In terms of complications from untreated strep, so we have superative, which is basically involving pus formation like peritonsil or abscess, otitis media, so an ear infection, or we have non-superative, which is which is not involving pus formation, like acute rheumatic fever. And what acute rheumatic fever is, it's an inflammatory condition that affects the heart, joints, skin, and that's pretty severe, so we do want to watch out for that. We also have post-streptococcus glomerulonephritis, which is a rapid decrease in kidney function. This is just some complications from untreated strep, which is why you want to treat it. But I do want to say that um, acute rheumatic fever, which is something very dangerous from untreated strep, because it's not really seen with kids. So we don't treat kids under th three years old for strep. Now, obviously this is a case to case basis, but for the most part under three, we don't treat for strep because they're not at risk for complications in terms of you know affecting the heart like acute rheumatic fever like someone else above three is. But then again, sometimes we do treat under three. For instance, if the under three year old, you have a two and a half year old who is the culprit and everyone in the family keeps getting strep because this one kid's not treated, because he's giving it to everybody else, then you might benefit from treating him. Or also in other cases, we do some exceptions. We treat under three years old in different scenarios. In terms of the recovery and contagious period, so we generally, as a rule of thumb, say that after 24 hours on antibiotics, they're no longer contagious. In terms of the follow-up, so we don't need to repeat the swab or repeat testing after they're done antibiotics. We just assume that they're that they eradicated the bacteria due to their symptoms going away. If their symptoms persist, then we would re-swab them and you would treat them again if they turned out positive. But usually we treat them with like a great a greater beta lactamase coverage than the previous one. So for so for instance, if you would originally have started on penicillin, you could use augmented or something like that. But in general, if someone's asymptomatic and their symptoms improve, you do not want to retest them because if they're a chronic carrier, first strep, and then you retest them, then you're going to put them on antibiotics, but they don't need it. So that's pretty much it for this for this lecture. I really hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions about strep or any other topic, then just write in the comment section below. Thank you.